All right, I'm ready. One of my earliest memories was walking a narrow path of Forest Service land. My five-year-old legs tired easily and the walk seemed to stretch on forever. The path was a straight shot through a grassy meadow lined with enormous glacial boulders, left in their current location thousands of years ago. Peaks of the Tobacco-Root Mountains loomed in the background. With my brothers Jeff and Alex in tow, we raced toward the hot spring. I remember the rocks that surrounded the soaking pool being slick with moss and squishing my toes into the sandy gravel bottom. Bubbles emerged from the gravel and floated to the surface all around me. The water hugged my body with all the warmth of Mother Earth. 25 years later, my brother gifted me a book for my 30th birthday. It detailed the hot springs of Montana and Wyoming, complete with maps on how to locate each spring. Colorful photos of people enjoying mineral soaks and historical tidbits and tales of hot springs past. The book was broken into sections and I began with the springs that were closest to my Bozeman home. Most people assume that Montana's hot springs are heated from magma chambers due to our close proximity to Yellowstone National Park. This is true for only a few hot springs, however, like Chico, Yellowstone, and the Boiling River. Hot springs further up the Rocky Mountain front are heated by uranium decay. Yep, that uranium. These include hot springs like Sleeping Child, Broadwater, Lolo, and Alhambra. Radioactive uranium generates a lot of heat when it decays. When water absorbs some of that heat and makes its way to the surface, you have yourself a hot spring. Luckily, the water is only absorbing heat from the uranium and not radioactive particles, except for the case of Alhambra Hot Springs located near Helena. The owners there used to bottle and sell the water, claiming it had all kinds of health benefits. Due to some unfortunate geologic luck, the water was found to actually be radioactive. This hot spring closed for good after a fire destroyed the hotel in 1959. The water is used today to heat a retirement home built over the source. Most of Montana's hot springs have been developed, like Lower Potosi that you see pictured here. Grand and often luxurious hot springs hotels and natatoriums were constructed over primitive hot spring sources. To begin my hot springs journey, I began by exploring the undeveloped springs. Bouncing down a rocky country road, I followed the book's detailed instructions. As we got closer to the base of the mountains, the road worsened from years of snow runoff and no maintenance. We found a spot to park and I scampered down a steep embankment to dip my foot into the water. Instant pain. It was scalding. Now, I always carry a bucket to mix in frigid water from the Jefferson and create the ideal soaking temperature. This was my first dip at Renova. Next, I headed further west. I'm walking carefully along a steep and icy trail. The smell of pine needles and damp earth fill my nostrils. Through the mist, I see it. Water trickles out of the mountainside. It runs along the granite hillside and has carved out a pool surrounded by well-worn wooden plank benches. The benches have been engraved with the initials of Soaker's past. I have arrived at Weir Creek Hot Springs. Initials and messages often are often carved in the benches of rustic bathhouses that surround hot springs. Take Horse Creek, for instance. On my first trip to soak here, I noticed a bathhouse surrounding the hot spring source. As the first trickles of morning light filtered in through the slats between the boards and danced across the steam rising from the spring, I read the interior walls littered with proclamations of love and names of adventure seekers etched into the walls. I couldn't help but wonder where all those people were as I soaked in the water that had once cocooned them in warmth. Montana is also home to many warm springs. These springs range in temperature from 70 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. They are a perfect heated pool on a hot summer day. If you've driven I-90 to Missoula, you've passed right by one of the most breathtaking. From the interstate, it looks like a marsh or a swamp, but walk into it and you'll discover an I-90 oasis, complete with a heated waterfall, turquoise water that rivals the Caribbean, and even an underwater cave that you can swim into if you're feeling brave. Another of my favorite warm springs is located smack dab in the center of the state. Gigantic Warm Springs is privately owned but accessible to the public. Upon arrival, pay close attention to the endearing homeowner sitting beneath a pop-up tent and a folding card table. He only takes cash and he might not have change, so bring a $5 bill. This unique swimming hole is the largest spring in the world. Water flows from the source at a rate of 50,000 gallons per minute, forming a large pool that cascades into a nearby stream. Montana's undeveloped hot springs are in danger of being loved to death. With increased traffic to many backcountry soaks, hot springs fragile ecosystems can easily be damaged. It's important to know etiquette when soaking in these places. Leave your glass at home. Pack out what you pack in. Dogs do not regulate their body temperature the same way humans do. Keep your fur babies out. Be good stewards of the land and live in reciprocity with nature. 
some hot springs have proven harder to find than others, particularly ones that have been found only by word of mouth. These are the most exciting to locate, or not locate. Trying to locate an elusive hot springs cave near Gardner, Montana, a couple of my dearest friends joined me on an afternoon wild goose chase. We came across old mining equipment, ramshackle cabins being reclaimed by nature, and remnants of predator kills. But the hot springs cave remained unexplored that day. We did happen to find evidence of geothermal activity and assumed that the cave may have been submerged under spring runoff. I wanna tell you about something spectacular that happens, especially on a night like tonight, when temperatures plunge between negative four degrees Fahrenheit and colder. <laughs> your wet hair freezes in less than a minute. With your body temperature comfortably nestled in hot mineral water, simply hold your hair out to the desired direction, wait a few short seconds, and it will freeze. Ice will creep its way over every inch of your hair. I still walk down narrow paths of Forest Service land. The walk doesn't seem as long as my five-year-old self remembered it to be, but the glacial boulders are still ripe for climbing. On this trip, I'm accompanied by two of my dearest college friends. We step in the same spots my five-year-old feet stepped, we laugh big belly laughs, and we let the sun warm our skin. When we arrive at the spring, I squish the gravel between my toes and submerge my body into the heated waters. The rocks that surround the soaking pools are slick with moss, and I remove some to squish between my fingertips. Warm wa water bubbles up around me. Sunlight reflects off the ripples of the water and dances across my skin. And I reflect on how much this hot water and these memories have enriched my life.